Hi everyone, this is Brittany Bond and welcome back to the podcast. Um, today I'm excited to talk about um, how men can create safety for women. Basically, the dynamic between the masculine and the feminine. And I'm going to talk about heterosexual um, dynamics first. I mean, this is all, this is like not a romantic conversation, um, but I did have someone ask me on Instagram if I could share more about um, homosexual dynamics within this. So at the end, I will share that. But first off, um, I shared about this on my Instagram yesterday, and I just felt so activated. So I'm going to go through some of the things that I shared on my Instagram. And um, and then I made a lot of notes. Like, I have so much that I can say about this, but the main thing that I really want to say is that it takes a lot. Um, it's very important for us to understand what is being played out collectively and what has been played out collectively in the past. Like basically, like understand the co the collective timeline of what's happening subconsciously, so that we can shift it in a conscious way for a better future, for a better now. You know, so because I'm all about like focus on the positive and you know like create the reality you want by being in that vibration so we're going to talk about that and also it's really important to acknowledge what you know what your soul was born into collectively like the energy of the mass consciousness and the energy that we're dealing with and how this plays out in each of us individually and also how it plays out in a collective way so what does that mean well being born my soul chose to be born in a female body and the, the energy in the world uh, from my birth until now, uh, it's shifting right now, but for many years, it was very like, and it still is, but I would say like when I was born, it was very toxic masculinity in the sense of, um, you know, the collective was really predominantly masculine driven everything needs to happen in a certain way and i mean if you look at even pop culture of like the movies that were made uh, when i was born <laughs> it was like women were not sp like spoken about in the, like literally if you look this up you can see how many lines do women have in movies in like the 90s versus like men like how many times do they actually get to speak in movies and it's really eye-opening to see. And then also, another thing is, uh, you can Google how many times a woman was a main character in a movie that like didn't talk about men. So even in the dialogue that the women were speaking about in the movies, they were usually talking about their connection romantically to a man instead of having their own character and their own life and everything. So a lot of the dynamic was them supporting the masculine and being like fulfilling masculine desires. And instead of them being the ones where the energy is coming towards them in a way that is nourishing for them, for them to be able to unfold and be uh, able to birth more beautiful things into the world. So it's been really flipped for a long time, for thousands of years, and now people are waking up to it, and it's beautiful. And we, as our generation, and everyone who's listening to this, is, but I would say specifically, like, if you're in your, like, early 30s and younger, there is this huge generation of us that is, like, I don't want to do that anymore. Like, whatever has been playing out, this is not who I am. Like, for me, as my soul, I come in and I'm like, what is going on in the collective? Like, this is not, I don't agree with any of this. And honestly, for a lot of my life, I have not really allowed myself to drop fully into my feminine energy and express it in the way it's, it's ironic to say this because a lot of you who are listening to me like since I've started my podcast I have really allowed myself to be fully in my feminine but if you knew me earlier in my life it wasn't like this my masculine side was very much leading on everything because I didn't feel safe so what does that mean well it's because like you know, early in my childhood, I experienced a lot of physical abuse, emotional abuse from my father. I also experienced a lot of systematic abuse. Systematic abuse is literally the system in whatever framework you, you grew up in. So this can be religious, 
This can be government. This can be the school system. Whatever community you are part of that you, like from a tribal perspective, you like our bodies need connection because back when we were actually in tribes, like, you know, we we're surviving for our physical survival. If you were cut out of the tribe, you literally died because an animal ate you or, you know, like, like being cut out of the tribe equaled death. And nowadays, our nervous system still experiences this, but from an emotional standpoint most of the time. So systematic abuse is when the tribe of whatever you are part of is using their power to not empower you, but actually control you and suppress you. So being a woman in the religion as a Jehovah's Witness, like being raised in a, as a Jehovah's Witness, <laughs> women do not have power. Women are not allowed to preach from the platform. They are not, a, like they have no position of power within the religion. They are not allowed to hold a position of power. They are there to be wives, to be mothers, and to preach. I mean, they do not have any control over what happens within the religion, which is running the whole, their whole community and running their whole life. So they have no control over what happens. They just have to, you know, hope that their husband or the religious leaders decide what is good for them. And a lot of times it is not decided in the favor of the feminine and in the favor of empowering the feminine. Also from, um, you can see this also in the way that like, Governments, in the, in, I grew up in America, so the way governments handle, <laughs> like, a lot of, like, for many, I could go into so many examples, but basically, like, I'll give you a couple examples from a government standpoint of many governments around the world, it's, like, a very new thing for women to have more protection if they've been physically abused or sexually abused, especially within a marital setting. So if their, spice, their spouse, like the person they're married to, is abusing them, in many countries around the world, this was not, and still in many countries around the world, this is not something where the system, which is supposed to be in place to empower you, is actually doing something to empower you. If you go to, if you're a Thai person here in Thailand and your husband uh, beats you up, and you go to the police station and you try and report him, they will laugh at you. They will not do anything to actually help you. Um, they will tell you to go home and like figure it out. Like th there's no like systematic support for women's safety. And the reason why I'm saying, of course it goes both ways, but I'm saying in most traditional dynamics, men are bigger than women physically and also from a systematic perspective, like from the government, from society, they have more power traditionally. Uh, this is the way we're programmed. This is like literally from birth. And also this is the way it plays out in the collective. So that's a lot. Blah, 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 blah. I'm, I'm sharing this podcast to be empowering. So I just wanted to like set that up just to help you have that awareness. Um, so on my own, I'll share, I wanna share what I talked about like in my Instagram post. Uh, there's a guy who shared, um, his name is Ishan. He shared a couple posts and I reshared the posts and then I wrote my comments below. So I'll read some of them. He said, a man is either creating life with a woman or taking life from her. And he's talking about energetically. There, oh wait, hold on. <laughs> I wrote this, I shared the last one first, hold on. Um, the first, the first one was, as long as this realm or this world is not a safe space for women, there will be no ascension. So there will be no, like, we're having this great awakening spiritually. And I wrote, oh my goodness, I feel this on a soul level. So many good men do not know what, it, they don't understand what it's like to be in a female body in the timeline. The reason why I say that is because d since dating Faraday, Faraday is a very empowered masculine um, and he has, he uses his power to support me, empower me. Like he really is here to empower me and all the women around him. Like he, he is a good man, right? So it was so interesting when I first started dating him because he was like, well, why don't you just speak up? Why don't you just do this? Why? And I was like, why don't I? Like for Faraday, it's so easy to speak up about certain things and this and that. And I was like, oh, this is because I have been shut down so many times in my life that there's this like, it's like almost like someone's choking me, you know? There's this, there's this energy of 
oh, it's better to not speak up because, you know, is anyone going to hear me? Or for a lot of women, it's like they're actually worried of physical violence. And this is not something they would actually, they might say out loud. They've maybe never even experienced physical violence. But, you know, as a woman, we carry seven generations of DNA from our past mothers in our womb. So some of this is actually being played out from an ancestral perspective. Like genetically, we have this feeling of like not being safe. And this all can be healed. We are literally here to heal this right now in this generation, which is really beautiful. But this is why there's this like, and sometimes mentally we're like, why can't I speak up? Why can't I be more in power? Like I know that I can, but when I'm in the moment, I freeze or I don't speak up or, you know, I'm not like fully in my power. And it's really important to acknowledge all these other points playing out. And also I'm sharing this with you that I feel like very in my power. I'm, I live a very free empowered life. And there's still parts of me that were when I started dating Faraday that were reflected to me where I was like, oh, I didn't realize I wasn't like fully speaking up in this moment or fully being in my power. And... And then I also was some education for him where I was like, do you know what it's like to be a woman? Do you know what it's like to be in this body? And also, I think it's really important for men to understand that us as women, we are like, we, if we are expressing our feminine energy predominantly, because we all have masculine and feminine energy within us, right? And the, the point is to be balanced in the middle, but like because we are... Uh, born, we chose to be born into a female body, we are expressing externally a lot of the energy that our bodies were born into. So for me, as a woman, I'm predominantly externally expressing my feminine energy. And when I do this, I am more in the receptive mode. So I'm not necessarily going to interrupt someone in a conversation and be like, yeah, yeah, this and that, and I, I don't think that, or hey, I want to do this. Or, hey. Like, I can do that, but that's me being in my masculine. What I would love is for someone to ask me, hey, babe, do you want to do this? Like, does this feel good in your body? Or like someone to ask me and create this opportunity for me to receive the information and to feel into my body and to feel what feels yummy for me and and then to express that and have that be heard and again I'm not saying this is all the time but I'm saying that this is when I am really in my full divine feminine I still am out doing all the things and I am very like externally active it's just I'm talking from more of an emotional psychological perspective it doesn't necessarily make me feel good in my body to always have to be in my, that, that's a masculine energy to always have to be, hey, I have to speak up for myself. Hey, I have to like interject myself here energetically into a conversation, into a situation to make sure my needs are met. What makes me feel really good in my body is to have the men around me in my life, my friends, um, my, my male friends and Faraday to check in with me to create opportunities for me to feel yummy and to receive and you know what ends up happening energetically what the feedback loop that is a healthy feedback loop is when a man creates this opportunity for a woman to <sighs> take a deep breath and to be in her feminine to be receptive is that she feels her body she's connected more and her, her feeling her body is her being more connected to source her being more connected to her higher self and when she's able to do this she is feeling so good and so like just imagine like this golden like string of energy coming all the way through the crown chakra all the way down through the root chakra into the ground and just like this golden energy just filling me up and feeling so juicy and when I'm having space to be in that juicy knowingness, oh my God, I'm so appreciative. I'm so like, oh, I love you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you. You're amazing. What would I do without you? Like, of course I can do it myself, but this feels so good. And like the masculine, this fills them up. This is what energizes them. And of course, like we all can do whatever we want. I'm, this, I'm saying this from a place of empowerment that I have proven to myself that I can take care of myself, that I can do everything I want in my life on my own. And also, this feels really yummy when it's done in a healthy way. 
And for the masculine, I'm going to speak to men. Like I make a lot of podcasts like that are, you know, in the end, predominantly directed toward women. This podcast is for all of you. And specifically, I'm going to talk to you really good men who are here, who are with us, who are choosing to show up and you're trying to figure out the best way to do that. And if you have a good man in your life, send him this podcast whether it's a friend, your partner, or whatever, like this is this is what we all need. And I'm here to share this. And I, I work with men a lot. And I actually really, really love this. This is my high priestess energy coming out and being like, this is what we need to heal. And we're all in this together. So something that I shared yesterday was um it's like for the feminine in order to th- for them to fully unfold into their full power we need to be able to heal all different layers of safety in our life. So there's like the layer of physical safety, of course, that is like baseline. Like if you're in survival, fight or flight mode or freeze, like you're not, (laughs) you're not going to be able to do anything else. You're not even using your full brain at that point. You're just trying to survive. So once we have that safety, there is uh, the thing that I think that is like the most important is emotional safety. This is what we face a lot as a collective right now. This is the thing that we're working through because we have progressed enough where we're not actually hurting each other a lot physically, but there's a lot of emotional safety and unsafety that's been played out. And I want to speak to women, (laughs) going back and forth, but the thing that I want to say to the women here is it is our responsibility to heal our trauma. It is our responsibility we can attract in the masculine that is the most safest man in the world. And this is something I'm realizing with Faraday is, yeah, he's got his stuff he's working on, but I have my trauma, right? And this is something that we have been talking about a lot lately is like, no matter how safe he is, I have to work on my own psyche and my own body trauma and, you know, in order to actually heal it so that I can be receptive to this safeness externally in the masculine. Otherwise, no matter how safe the man is, we will be, if we internally believe that we are not safe, we will create situations, we will attract in situations, we will attract in men that prove this. So if you have a belief in some way as the feminine that you are not feeling safe, this is not the time to date someone. This is the time to do your healing work. And of course, we're always healing, right? Like I thought I had, I have done a lot of healing work in my life and I thought I was, you know, mostly healed by the time Faraday came into my life. And what I realized is there is levels to that shit. And when he came into my life, there was this whole other level of safety and it was emotional safety. And for me, I am, I am all emotions. I am all Scorpio water energy of emotions. And so for me, this is like, this can feel like dying if I don't feel emotionally safe. And this was a level that I hadn't had the opportunity to be reflected to me by past partners because we just hadn't even gotten that deep. I hadn't healed myself in order to open up to see that, oh, this is another thing that can be healed. So with Faraday, I was able to do that. And wow, it it really showed me like (laughs) that I have to, so there's, you need to make sure you're with a healthy partner. I'll just say that. But so if you understand that you are with a healthy partner and this means that they are supportive of you, they are there for you. They clearly communicate. They stay, if they say something, they, they're consistent. Their actions prove that they are consistently showing up for you and you can feel energetically that they have your best interests at heart. That's all we can really ask of the masculine um, because they're also growing. They're doing their best, you know, and I think that's amazing. I appreciate Faraday for always, like that's something I will always say about him. He's always shown up for me. He has always been there. Even when he doesn't understand what to do, he's always there. And that consistency has created a lot of lived experience of safety in my body. And then my responsibility is that I need to be able to create within myself the reality of absolute safety. And this, this is, this can kind of cover all of the ones like psychically safe, you know, emotionally safe, like psychically is like the energy uh, and physically safe. So what I do is I do a lot of meditations in the morning 
and I med- and I imagine, and some of these are self-pleasure mas- meditations, like, oh my gosh, masturbation is one of the best manifesting energy sessions. But whatever I'm doing, whether it's meditating with Rafe or masturbating, I imagine what it feels like to live in a reality where my inner little girl is so safe. Like she's so safe that she's running around playing. She's talking to everyone. She's just like doing whatever she feels like in every single moment. And she's so bubbly and she's just so filled with life and energy. And just in English, we have a word called ever, ever, ever vescent, which just means like, it's like she's glowing, you know, with just like joy and energy. And I do this in the morning because when I hit that, sp- that spot of like that vibration, if I can sit with that for like five or 10 minutes, for the rest of the day, I, s- I intuitively start looking for situations and moments and connection points with men in my life that are reflecting this vibration. And wow, I will tell you that it works so good. It works so, so good. I really recommend it. Like the last couple of days, I have been really focusing on this and I just like go through the day. And what, what I realize is that when I set this vibration in the morning, I am more in my receptive feminine. I'm, I'm feeling, I'm literally putting my vibration into the mode of safety. And so what happens is throughout the day, I'm more open, I'm more playful, I'm feeling safe, you know? And so then uh, this attracts in connections with the masculine that reflect the safety. And also, I will tell you that when a woman feels safe and she's in her joy, all the masculine wants to do is support that and and like and like expand that. They're like uh, this is this is like the most yummy energy for the masculine to receive. And so if you're around uh, like the masculine and you're in this energy, it's like they just go immediately into like, how can I, how can I create more of this for you? How can I protect this energy? How can I expand this energy? How can I share my energy with you in a way that is, is like, is like, you know, creating more of this bubble because they love that energy. And then when you appreciate them, like, wow, thank you for showing up for me. Thank you for doing that. Like, oh my gosh, thank you. And it doesn't need to be romantic at all. It's just this sharing this yummy energy this is this is the point of all of this you know like this is this is this is what will heal the world i'm telling you if we are able to women can feel safe and men can feel like they are helping expand the safety because when everyone is in this energy everything can be created everything can be healed because everyone is feeling safe um wow okay i went on a little tangent there and okay so for men, we're going to talk to men. In order for you to really be in the energy of um, protecting and expanding this energy for women, um, you have to face the inner masculine in you that has the ability to actually hurt and destroy. So I imagine it being like, my cat is coming to say hi. I imagine it being like a dragon inside of you. And this dragon, like imagine dragons, like Game of Thrones and stuff. Like the dragons, like Daenerys used the dragons to protect and to liberate the slaves and to, and to like the dragons literally protected her so that she could be in her divine feminine and do what she wanted in the world. And of course, uh, the last couple of seasons were not written by the original author, blah, blah, blah. They went off on a weird tangent. But throughout the seasons, as she's coming into her power, I've read all the books. I actually really love Game of Thrones from just... Anyways, I love it from like an archetype standpoint. And also, if you read the books, it's so well written. And I love reading. So... Um, the dragon supports her. If we're talking about Daenerys the dragon supports her so that she can unfold and be in her divine feminine and full power and she can create all these beautiful things. So this dragon lives in all men. This is the energy to either protect or burn everything down and destroy. And if you do not make friends with your dragon, if you do not learn how to ride your dragon and channel that energy, it will Either you will, as the masculine, you will be more in your feminine, you will suppress it. 
so this happens with a lot of men today because they don't understand what to do. They just think that that dragon energy is bad. That is what causes bad men, which causes disconnection. And so they just kind of like suppress it. And they, bec I see a lot of really amazing men, like this, n this new earth generation of men, like f from like 20s to 30s, where they're just so in their feminine. And they, they don't know a lot of times how to show up in a way that is actually helping the collective and like what we need right now. And something to know about me is I am trained in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu for about three or four years. The reason why I did this is because w in my early 20s, I really needed to get out a lot of anger I had towards men. And also, I really wanted to learn self-defense. So um, I was living in, <laughs> actually was living in New York City at the time. And I was started taking self-defense classes. And, uh, and then I started dating a guy who was a boxer and he was like, you should try jujitsu. And I was like, I don't want to get like, when you think of jujitsu, it's like guys wearing these kind of like, like thick kimono robes and they're like on the ground wrestling. Like that's jujitsu. Um, it's originally started I in Brazil and it goes around the whole world. And at the time I was living in San Francisco when I first started doing it and it was Mostly, I, st I trained in Hoff Gracie's uh, gym, which is of the family who originally started jiu-jitsu. So it's like a really amazing gym. I trained with Hoff Gracie, and he, we're still friends to this day. He, like, loves me, and I love him. Um, but all the other men there are these huge Brazilian black belts. So I'm like this, you know, I'm very petite uh, and skinny and just like, hi! <laughs> and, like... Um, I was worried and like literally it's just like okay someone get on top of you and choke you and like how do you get out of it like this is like this is what you do you just like roll around and you learn all these self-defense moves and but what I loved about it was that being in the energy of these huge like bears like these huge like you know think of like the Dothraki like these big men um who were like they had been training in jiu-jitsu since they were children. So for them, it was just like they breathed it. And what they taught me was that understanding your power as a man was the best way to really show up in the collective. Because when you, like what they would say to me, it's funny because they were, on the surface, they were very simple men, like intellectually, like, you know, a lot of them were like Uber drivers and stuff. Uh, but they were super deep, like, and they were like, they were like, when you, when you do jujitsu, it's a meditation, it's a slowing down, it's choosing peace, because jujitsu is actually self defense, and it's de escalating. It, you're not there to uh, hurt someone, you're there to submit them and submit them is getting to a point where they have to to tap out. So like getting them in a choke where they just can't move anymore or, you know, taking their back and like making it so they like literally just getting to the point where they can't move and they have to tap you on the shoulder and say, okay, we're done. So it's not about hurting someone. It's about de-escalating. And they told me the best, the most powerful men or people, but we're talking about the men right now in this form of like physical physicality they were like the most powerful men are the ones who know that the best way forward is to not actually use their power to not create violence from it it's to create peace from it and from a lived body experience for me to train with them I was there for about four months when I first started and I would go every single day and at first they wouldn't even let me train with them they were just like go do some exercises in the corner like you're too weak and I was like, I want to learn. And then finally they would start bringing me in and I became like the little sister. And the thing with it is like, it's very, there's no sexuality. There's no romance. It's literally like brothers and sisters. This is the culture and the community in jujitsu. And I really, really honor that. And it healed so much in me because feeling from like a lived experience in my body, like all of these brothers who just had my back, you know, and I ended up hanging out with a lot of them outside of training. I would meet all their families and their kids and we would just have so much fun together. And it was like my inner little girl was just so happy. And when I would like, we call it rolling when you would like wrestle with someone on the, like, and try and submit each other, having these like huge, like, I don't know, like 
over two meter men and just big and me just being like underneath them and realizing, wow, I feel so safe right now. Like they know how to use their body in a way where I will not ever feel like they're going to actually hurt me. And one thing we, we have a joke in jujitsu that the, the most dangerous people are white belts, the, the beginners, because it's like a lot of people, we're talking about men right now, a lot of men who just think that they can go full power and like this, this energy of like chaos, full power, it's unchanneled dragon energy. That is actually what creates pain. That's what breaks bones. That's what, because they're not in control of their body. They, they're not in a meditative state. They're not using their brain connected to their body. Um, so yeah, I'm sharing all of that because I find that this to be like a really positive thing for men to get in touch with this. So in whatever way that resonates with you, it can be martial arts, it can be just exercise, it can be going out in the jungle and screaming, you know, like just get in touch with this, this dragon in you and understand what the power is in that. You know, in traditional tribes back in the day, they had initiations when a man came into his his manhood, when a boy came into his manhood, the elders in the community would take him into the jungle. They would usually go hunting. They would have some sort of survival thing happen so that it was like, you can take care of yourself physically. And then they would initiate him into what it meant to be a man in the tribe and how they could show up for the women and what their place was, which was, which was to be protectors and providers for the women so the women could take care of kids. And of course, we're in a different dynamic uh, today in society, but I'm talking more nowadays, it's more from an emotional standpoint. Like a lot of women can pay their own bills. They can take care of themselves physically from an emotional and energetic standpoint. We still need this. Like a lot of men, I've had partners in the past where I made more money than them and they were like, what can I offer you? Like, like kind of like, how am I worth anything to you? And I was like, energy, emotions, like being here with me, just holding the space where I can be in my full feminine and understanding that that's the best way to allow me to unfold. I don't need you to feel my feelings for me. I just need you to hold your grounding energetically so that I can unfold into my full power. This is the biggest gift any man can give a woman. Um, let me just look at my notes. So again, this is not about shaming you for being a man. And like a lot of men don't want to look at this part of themselves because they actually have internalized shame that they don't realize from being, from understanding what men have done collectively, like in the past towards women and for the earth and like just this energy of like the masculine that is unhinged dragon energy, like dragon energy that is chaos, that is burning things down, that is literally destroying the earth right now. This is the masculine energy that is not used for good. And women also have this, but I'm specifically talking about men because in traditional societies, men have run societies for the last 10,000 years. So um, when you can face this part of yourself, this is what shadow work is. You can Google shadow work. This is facing the parts of yourself that have the potential to hurt and create negativity, negative energy in the world, integrating them, becoming friends with them, showing them love, and realizing that everything is, all of these parts need to come back to ourselves in a conscious way. And when we do, we use that for good. So just as women, we have so many shadow parts. And I really, I will honor that the, there's a lot of women in the collective right now that are doing the work. They are really facing their shit and integrating and facing their shadows and doing their best to become in their full power. And we need men in order to speak, like in order to really feel safe to fully be in our power. Because if we're doing all of this in silos, like outside of the connection to the masculine, it's not going to heal the collective. We need to do this all together. And in order for that to happen, men need to do their work. Men need to face their shadows. And we actually need you to be in your power. We don't want to, em they call it emasculation, where you are suppressing this part of yourself. We need you to integrate it and to love it because we love it. We love it also. We want this part of, of you to be expressed in a way that is positive, in a way that is creating safety for us. Um, and when we, when this does happen, like we, we, as the feminine are so nurturing, we are so appreciative. We are so <laughs> excited to have you in our lives and we love you so much for it. 
And this is the energy that is the feedback loop that is a positive energy that is helping everyone in the collective. Um, so in this post I shared yesterday, this guy said, the safest men to be around are the ones that have made pe peace with their inner predator, or I call it dragon energy, and choose to embody their truth as a protector of the, protector of the feminine while also being deeply grounded in integrity as beacons of life light. So another thing I notice too is like sometimes when men are like, do I need to protect all the women in the world? Like this feels overwhelming. Like what do I do? And it's like, one, you need to have boundaries. This is not you showing up for the feminine is not you just like throwing all your needs out the window and serving the feminine. It's under, it's staying in your grounded place, having your boundaries, doing what excites you. And also understanding that it's, you don't need to solve everything for the collective. It's every single one of us being our puzzle piece is what solves it for the collective. So the women in your life that you have right now, the ones you actually are in contact with and that you care about and that you love, these are the ones that you protect. And then also day to day, if you encounter situations where women need you to show up for them and you sense that a woman feels unsafe or that a masculine energy is using their dragon energy in a negative way, then this is a time to show up. But you don't need to fix everything in the world. No one can do that. We all need to do it together. Does that make sense? Because I think sometimes men get really overwhelmed. And then also something I want to speak to is that say you're in a situation where you, you notice a woman needs help. So I'm just going to give a, a, you an example. A guy is hitting on a woman. Another man comes into the situation and can tell that the woman feels very uncomfortable with the way the man is using his energy. He's being pushy. The woman doesn't know what to do. She wants to get out of the situation. She might be afraid to say no to him vocally because of fear of physical retaliation. La, 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 right? So a man might not know what to do in this situation. And I'm going to give you some tips on what to do. So you can go up to the woman if you sense this happening, what I usually, I have done this a lot, uh, where I will go up to and go near the situation and hear and listen to a little bit more to see what's happening. And when I can determine, okay, yeah, this is a weird situation energetically, I go to the woman and I say, are you okay? Do you feel safe? And if she says no, or if she freezes and cannot respond, like if she just kind of looks at me like a deer in a headlight, that's freezing, uh, then I turn to the man and I say, um, this is, this is really important. It's the energy that you, you speak when you speak to the man. You can say, brother, you are a good man. Let's create safety for women. Like, like, so the reason why I say this is that if you are in the energy of calling out the goodness of the man that is using his dragon energy for negative, then it can snap him out of it. Because sometimes like the most violent men that I have seen are the ones who are shamed for their darkness because they know internally deep down that they actually are in the wrong. And this, when they are shamed for this and they're called out and they're like, Hey, and they come at you, come at it with this kind of like, you're a bad person. Then this can f f in a tribal setting, this is the disconnection. This is calling them out. This is putting them out of the tribe. Like you don't belong here. You need to go. And if someone is being physically violent, yeah, they need to go. But if they're emotionally and it's a conversation, then you can de-escalate the conversation and the situation by creating the vibration like, hey, we're all connected and we need to create safety for women right now. So this is what we need to do. If the guy gets physically violent with you and tries to escalate it, then it's best to use your power, your physical power, to de-escalate the situation. So don't attack him back, but make sure the women and you get out of the situation in a way that feels safe. Um, so this is really important. This happens every single day. And so many men just freeze because one, they're not used to being, in th they, ha they personally have not encountered a lot of situations where men are just aggressive in general at them so they like they are almost frozen they're like what is happening and two a lot of times they don't know how to inter interject into the situation without making it worse like they worry that oh if i if i step in then the guy is going to attack me or attack her it's going to escalate 
but you can step in in a way that is de-escalating by having this energy. Uh, I'll give you an example with my, with my dogs, like with my dog, Afro, I go to the beach with her and there's a ton of, of dogs that come up and you know, my energy towards them, many people, Thai dogs here attack a lot on the beach because they're territorial and they're, they've been abused, you know, usually hurt people, hurt other people, well, hurt dogs are scared and hurt other dogs. And so the way that I respond, and this is kind of what I'm saying in the situation is I come at them and I'm like, hi, how are you doing? It's okay. Everything's okay. So I'm de-escalating the energy. And also my personal energy when I stand there is very firm and grounded. So I'm kind of like, I'm sharing my positive energy with you, but if you come at me, I will fuck you up. That is the energy that you need to be in when you are showing up for women. It's like you are grounded in your masculine. You're not going into your feminine being like, oh, it's okay. Everything's okay. You're like, hey, you're a good man. This is what we need to do for the woman. Let's create safety for her. Let's, let's not do this. But if the guy is, you have this energy where you're like, I'm here. I am a mountain. I'm here showing up for this woman. I'm not going anywhere. And usually when men encounter this energy, which is, gr- which is the divine masculine, a grounded man who is peace, who's creating more peace in the world, not more violence, they, w- they will leave because a lot of times they're confused or they're like, they just don't, they, sometimes they wake up to what they're doing and sometimes they're just like, this is not a fight. Like usually bullies, bully, bully people and things that they feel are weaker than them. So when you share this, like this is you being in your power as the divine masculine, when you share from this place of power, then a lot of times they'll just back off because they want to go pick someone else who they think is weaker. If all of the men were doing this, there wouldn't be any more place for men to, you know, be causing situations. Um, And also it teaches them like, hey, this is not how we act. We don't do this. A lot of times men are doing this because they just can get away with it. And they they just think this is normal and this is how I can treat them. And it's okay, like how I can treat women. Like I had a situation where I was in the sauna the other day and um, there's usually enough space for like six people in the sauna at my gym. And it's public space. I mean, it's like everyone at the gym. So I don't, sometimes I know people in there, sometimes I don't. And... I have very sensitive skin. I'm white. I'm Irish. So I, um, I can't take the heat. Like I think also as women, we are more sensitive. Our skin is more sensitive. So this guy comes, these two, like I'll call them bros, you know, like the athletic bro-y guy come in and they're already like talking really loud and he does not check in at all. And he just pours a ton of water on the, it's a dry sauna on the steam to the point where like everyone else in there, it's all men besides me. Everyone, even the men are like, ah, this is too hot. And I was like, hey, can you, um, can you please like check in? Because this was too hot for me. And he was just like, his whole energy was just turned at me super aggressively. Like, no, I'm going to do whatever I want. I, this is what I wanted and you're ugly and you should leave the sauna. And I was just like, I don't know how to respond to this. I said, I said, I don't know how to respond to that, but like, what the fuck, dude? And um, a woman walked in right in the moment when he said that. So she was also like, what is going in? And then the guy who he came in with, like his friend. So I'll call this guy Ken. The friend is named Ken in my mind. He was like, he also did. And I knew Ken. So like he didn't say anything. And I'm just looking at him like, why aren't you standing up for me? And like there's other men in there and there no one's doing anything. And then I finally turned to, and the guy keeps going. Like he just keeps coming at me and talking and saying like bullshit. And I turned to Ken. I was like, why are you not helping me right now? And then finally he was like, the Ken guy was like, okay, maybe we should stop. Maybe that, maybe let's, let's all like be peaceful. So in the end he did show up for me. And when I left the sauna in that situation, I, I, I saw Ken again and I said, who is this guy? And he was like, oh, he's my friend. I've never seen seen him be aggressive like that. And I said to him, I really appreciate you speaking up for me. And also I want you to know that this is a normal thing for women to deal with for when we speak up, for men to just not be used to us speaking up and for them to be just really aggressive out of nowhere because, and a lot of women just, they just kind of cater to that. They are like, they cower, they, they submit. I'm not one of those women. Um, But I said to him, I was like, this is a normal thing that women deal with right now and that we're shifting this as a collective and it's very normal for men to freeze because they've, they've not experienced this before and they don't know what to do. 
And he was like, yeah, I didn't know what to do. I know him. I've never seen him be like this before. And I said, well, if this ever happens in the future, please speak up immediately because that could have been a really positive experience for me where I didn't have to defend myself because I'm tired of having to speak up. And I, it doesn't matter how nice of a vibration I say I speak up for my needs. There's certain men who just do not want to hear it because they're so used to them getting their own way. And, and you know, in the end, I could tell the guy who was saying all this stuff because in the end, other people in the sauna, like the woman spoke up and she was like, that's not cool. And other people finally started to realize like, oh, we can speak up too. And then he could see that he was like, oh, I, I fucked up, you know? But like... I just was like, I don't know who hurt him, but he is putting, projecting that onto other people, but I don't deserve this. Like I'm in my home vibration. This is my home gym, five minutes from my house. I come here every day. I deserve to feel safety in my body. And of course I knew he wasn't going to physically hurt me, but emotionally, like when it, the next time I went back to the sauna, I went with Faraday because I was like, if this guy's here, I don't want to talk to him. I don't want to deal with him. I want Faraday to deal with him. And, you know, when I came, Faraday wasn't there at the time. When I came home and told him, he was like, do you want me to go back to the sauna? I will talk to him. And I was like, thank you, babe. Um, so I really appreciate, like, and I did say thank you to this Ken guy. Like, thank you for showing up for me. It does mean a lot. And he, I could tell that that meant a lot for him for me to say that. And we're, like, we're healing it step by step, you know. But I also I had a lot of women reach out to me and say, like, that they, they feel um, tired of also having to speak up. So this is a lot, um, but Faraday needs to go right now and take the podcast equipment. So I also really want to honor that. Like, um, I have so much more that I could say, um, but I feel like this was, this was mostly what I wanted to say. Um, like this is an exciting time. I want to say all of this as a, end it on a positive note. Like this is everything I said here. I'm saying because I actually believe that we can shift it. I actually, we are shifting it. And the more of us that get on board with this, the more that men get in touch with, I'm ending it, one minute. Um, the more that men get in touch with this side of themselves and allow this to come out, you know, this dragon energy and then train, like train it and, and ride the dragon, dragon and channel this energy for creating safety for women around them, um, it, it will heal the collective babes it will heal it we we are here for all of that and as women we appreciate you for showing up and doing the work i want to speak on behalf of the collective of women here that we are here to speak for you we are here to appreciate you and we we are here to receive you in this and to support you in doing your shadow work and in in coming into your full power and yeah, I just, uh, I'm so excited to talk more about this. And I have, if, if you're a man and you're listening to this and you want to, you want to work with me, I, I work with men a lot actually. Um, and I'll tell you that as a man, if you are, if you are integrated in this, literally every woman that you ever are in contact with, they're all going to be so appreciative. They're all going to love you. Like this is the way to, you know, you, you do not do this to like attract in your partner, but this is who you should be as a man. But I will tell you that this also will attract in a lot of amazing women into your life that want to date you because like, this is like the best energy and this is what we all want. Okay. I'm going to speak more in the next one about more stuff, but I'm here and I love you guys and I'm sending you so much love and I hope you have an amazing day. Bye. Okay. So just a little add on. Um, Faraday needed to leave and he was going to record a podcast. Uh, so he went, needed the podcast equipment and he might not have noticed, but in this episode, it's like I took a little drugs and I was like, ah, I'm talking super fast or had a lot of caffeine. Uh, I didn't, I didn't do any of those things. Um, it was just that I was so excited to share everything that I wanted to share with you, uh, that I was trying to get it all in. Um, and I wanted to say all of this because normally, you know me, like my podcasts are super chill and like, yeah, they can be intense, they can be whatever. But the thing I really enjoy is <sighs> taking a lot of deep breaths and like making sure the journey is just as fun as the destination. So I invite that for you. Take lots of deep breaths and have an amazing day. Bye.